We can see how Transmedia would work for million dollar sort of ad campaign, sure. but for a um, low budget film, for somebody that's an independent filmmaker, yeah. maybe working with a six figure budget, sure. um, how can they incorporate Transmedia? It seems like it's almost out of the picture for them in some You sense. would think. I mean, this is this. I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions of, of Transmedia is that we, you know, and, and partly it, it, it's 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 my fault because I talk about large projects, Star Wars, uh, you know, Harry Potter, uh, you know, things like this. We 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 look toward the, all the Marvel stuff that's going on now. The way they design their projects is tremendous for the audience experience, and the only reason that they do that, the only reason that these projects are rolling out the way they they're rolling out, is because the market has an appetite for it. So so they're proving the fact that the audience wants that type of a project, something that, that is a never go dark uh, experience. So it, after the movie, I still should be able to go home and ex be able to experience more stories somewhere else. Uh, after the, you know, between episodes of the TV show, I should be able to engage online with some sort of added content. But um, uh, this is what the market wants. So we can establish that. But again, how do how do uh, how does an indie filmmaker how do that if they don't have you know a billion dollars at their disposal? In my perspective, it's all about how do we use the principles of George Lucas? How do we use the principles of Marvel? How do we use the principles of Harry Potter and apply them to to our project, our smaller project, our independent project? That's what fascinates me. I think most about about this because the the law of gravity uh, let's just say the law of lift the law of lift over uh, overcomes the law of gravity in order to make an airplane fly you look at a 777 that that picks up out off the uh, off the ground and flies into the sky you you don't say well i have to have a 777 in order to fly you know uh, you can have a smaller plane and if you understand the law of lift and the law of gravity and how those work together if you just understand those principles your tiny little plane can fly just as much as the the, the big 777 you may have to gas up more times you may not may not be able to go as far but you can still get in the air and so so that's the way i look at it i look at you know uh, star wars is the 777 but if the Star Wars is proving to us what the law of lift and what the law of gravity can do, let's take those laws and apply them to our own project. Because I think it's actually more necessary for an independent project to be able to, uh, or an independent producer, an independent screenwriter, to be able to understand the multi-platform world and a transmedia world and what I call a super story model, where because they don't have the P&A budgets, that's what it really breaks down to. The three hundred thousand dollar picture, the hundred thousand dollar picture, they're not going to have the thirty five million dollar P and A budget. They're not going to have the seventy million dollars of P and A to be able to let everybody know wh who they are, what their project is, and why they should support it. So they have to approach the marketplace differently. Again, the the if if, if the lemonade stand analogy, if there's a thousand other lemonade stands, not only a thousand other lemonade stands, but a thousand other lemonade. Uh, enterprises that are much bigger and more expensive and they have better lemons and more money to spend, you have to figure out a different way because you don't have the same, you don't have the same resources. And so if you look at how you advertise, um, you know, it's to get one commercial on one time for 30 seconds on Fox in prime time, $350,000 just for the, not just the production budget of the, of the, uh, of the commercial, just for the, the 30 second hole to display one, one uh, commercial one time. So usually independent filmmakers don't have that to spend. Uh, or if they do, what I say, what would happen if you did one less commercial? What would happen if you took that $350,000 and you would spend it on, on, on something that, that could actually give your fans uh, or people that, uh, that support your project more content? And how do we differentiate ourselves in the marketplace? How do we spend the money wiser? And so, you know, for me, I look at something like Moonlight. You know, before Moonlight won an Oscar, it, it, very few people saw it. And Moonlight's a great film. Uh, but if you look at the box office before it won an Oscar and the box office after it won an Oscar, it's very different. It was only only a few theaters made a few hundred thousand, you know, hundred thousand dollars or so. Uh, then after it won a, the Oscar, it got a, the wide release. But you can't, as an independent producer, you can't build a 
business plan around winning an Oscar. All we gotta do is win an Oscar, then we're good. So you gotta approach the marketplace differently. And so, so for me, it, I will take, I wanna look at an independent project and say, okay, this independent project, how can I begin to seed uh, interest and awareness and develop pre-awareness before my movie comes out? So the two years that it takes to even produce a film and release a film, uh, you could be already building pre-awareness for it through things like self-publishing a novel. You can release uh, interesting digital content. You can give all your characters in your, in your script Twitter accounts and as if they were real people and go ahead and start seeding storylines and create interaction uh, between them months before uh, the film is ever released. You can, um, uh, you can go after different markets and create music content that may give you access to a different target market than the main target market of your movie. And not only that, you can do some of these things that can actually start generating revenue well ahead of the release of the film. So, so for me, the that is a much better spend than a single commercial that you would spend on the back end. And uh, that, gives, that gives your fan base now more content to dig into and gives you a separation of the marketplace from all the other independent films that are being released. So, so you know, if you, look at, if, you look at, if you look at programs like AMC Independent, where the, you, know, you can go directly to the exhibitor, uh, with, uh, bypassing the distributor, which is a great program, the way they choose which, which uh, projects to put into their AMC Indie program is how, how are you going to build awareness for your campaign or for your film? How are you going to let people know that you're, that, uh, you're there because you're not going to have the distributor paying for the P&A? So, uh, so now you have to have that mechanism to build pre-awareness, but what's cool is after that architecture is out there, any fans that go into the film that haven't seen all the stuff that you've done, even to build pre-awareness, they now can go back, flow backwards and access it. And now it's extended content for them. So now after I see the Moonlight movie, I can go read the Moonlight novel that's a continuation of it. I can then go dig into the, uh, into the comic books to see new storylines. You can use a book of poetry that gives you insight into a whole different character. There's lots of stuff that you can do understanding the principles of the big guy, but be able to apply it to your independent project in a way that gives you that separation and advantage in the marketplace. That's excellent. Let me just make sure I understand it because I, I still have trouble, sure. you know, wrapping my mind around the concept of transmedia. So it's like building bridges. If we're using this architectural sort yep. of analogy, sure. it's building bridges. It's not repeating the same story over and exactly. over again. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We, you know, for for me, I never want to tell the same story twice. That that's what I, that my goal is. That I go into a transmedia project. I never want to tell the same story twice because the the thing that fans love the most of, the the most more than anything is new story. And, um, you know, I just recently binged all six seasons of Game of Thrones. And after six seasons in a, in a month, all I wanted was more story. And I was searching for more story and searching for more story. I thought about going and reading the books, but I knew the books would pretty much tell me the same story. And so I wanted new stuff. That's what I wanted most of all. And so that's what, that's what fans want. You know, when I was a, when I was a kid, my mom bought me, I was a Star Wars fan, and my mom bought me the novelization of the original trilogy, which was great in the, in, you know, in the, in the early 90s, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there, and I was a good, I was a heavy reader, so she got me the book, I read it, and it was good. It was the same story um, in both places, and so it was okay. But in The Empire Strikes Back, there's a scene in The Empire Strikes Back that where Darth Vader is talking to a group of bounty hunters, and he, he tells them all to go out and catch Han Solo. Boba Fett is the only one who does, and you never see all those other bounty hunters again. One day, my mom bought me a different book called The Tales of the Bounty Hunters, which was a short story anthology following all those other bounty hunters and their adventure trying to catch Han Solo and ultimately how they failed. For me, when I read that as a kid, it, w it was revelatory because it was new Star Wars stuff. Like, it wasn't the same stuff. It was new Star Wars stuff, which was awesome. I, I like, completely devoured that book in a couple days uh, because it was new. And, and for the filmmakers, it was a great way, one, to generate new revenue, two, to continually engage an audience in new stuff without having to shoot another movie. 
So if, for filmmakers, if, if, if filmmakers only think the way to tell stories is through movies, then they won't tell that many stories because it's very, as you know, it's very expensive and difficult to be able to shoot movies all the time. And so even if you spend the rest of your life making movies and you never stop, there's going to be two year gaps. You know, it's, I mean, it's going to be, when you go into development, uh, pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, distribution, it's a two year cycle to be able to get a movie out into the market. And so if all you did is, is make movies, there's going to be two year gaps where you're not engaging in the fan base. So now, uh, uh, in, in this oversaturated world of entertainment, not engaging your fans for two, year, two years is a dangerous thing. And so, uh, and so now you have to figure out different ways to engage them. Well, how do I do it if I can't make movies? Well, you, do, you use other things just as much. And so as you're making your movies, let's be feeding our fans new content through all the things that we have at our disposal. Social media content, uh, I'm not talking about advertising through social media, I'm saying, you know, how do we deliver content through social media that extends the story in a valuable way? How do I use uh, digital content? How do I use uh, comic books, self-published novels, music, art, uh, you know, uh, fine art, you can do sculptures, you can do poetry, you can do anything that can tell a story, stage plays, TV, whatever you want, all the options are out there that one can give your audience more engagement and more story, which they love more than, more than anything else. And two, it gives your investors more of an opportunity to capture revenue. And so one of the biggest obstacles for, uh, for an independent artist is how do you find investment money? How, how does the independent investor uh, look at your movie and find that it's a good business model? And, and what we've seen now is the investment, the, the pools of investment money is drying up rather quickly. It's very difficult to be able to uh, go out and get the, the amount of money that we need to create these films because the business model doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. There's been too much disruption in the marketplace. It creates, it costs too much to, to, to advertise for a film. I mean, Steven Soderbergh was just, he just had a, uh, uh, an, an interview where he said, just to be a blip on the radar, now you have to have $35 million of domestic P&A, $35 million of international P&A, just to be a blip on the radar to let people know you're there because there's so much competition. There's too many lemonade stands in the neighborhood. And which means that's $70 million of P&A. To recoup, to recoup your P&A, it's 50 cents on a dollar. So all of a sudden to recoup that $70 million of P&A, you have to make $140 million. Add in, let's say, let's say you have a million dollar production budget, then it's $141 million break even on a $1 million picture. So imagine yourself as a businessman, I go to, uh, I go to you and say, uh, I say, Karen, will you invest in my script for a million dollars? We can make this amazing film together. And all we have to do is make 141 million and you get all your money back. <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? And uh -huh. so now people say, well, well, uh, well I won't do any P&A then. I'll just, you know, don't go, won't go through a distributor and just self, you know, self distribute or whatever. That now, if you don't have, if you don't have another plan of how to build awareness for your project and engage an audience, it, th that's maybe even more dangerous than the first route. Or you may, uh, you may say, well, I'll cut back on the P&A, or I'll, you know, and it's just a game of how far can I cut back uh, and still be able to survive. So for me, if we can figure out a different way forward to say, to, an to, to go to an investor and say, here, is how we're going to give you a different business model. Here's how we're gonna give you an opportunity to recoup faster and to recoup more and recoup over a longer period of time. And so now instead of just one revenue stream that I can generate that you can recoup, which is the movie, it's gonna be the main one, now there's gonna be four or five additional ways that you can recoup. And not only that, as we wait our two years before you recu start recouping from the movie, you'll be recouping in these other two ways that are gonna hit the marketplace a lot earlier. So you'll be recouping your, your investment 
well before the movie even hits the market, which is great. And instead of the two to five year window that you'll have to, to recoup the bulk of your investment from the film, now we can build it to where there's a 15 year window because after the movie gets out and it has this two year window to generate the revenue, then we're gonna release this and then we're gonna release this and then we're gonna release this. And that's gonna bridge the gap uh, up until the time we maybe wanna release a different film. And uh, and you're gonna be a, play a part in all that. So here's product diversification, we have a product line diversification. We have multiple streams of revenue. We're hitting not just one or two markets. Now we're going to hit seven markets for a longer period of time. When you start to position yourselves like that, now it becomes a better business decision for the investor, which is better for the independent producer because somebody has to pay for your movie. Because then a lot of people say to me, well, I'll just do Kickstarter. Kickstarter is the savior of the independent, of the independent film. You know, 90% of films that are on Kickstarter don't get funded at all, get zero dollars. And it's so sad. And, 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 and it's just, there's that much stuff out there. The 10% that do get funded, get funded at, on an average of $12,000. And to make, a, to make a career as an independent filmmaker, we can't, we have to, we have, our vision has to be greater than $12,000 movies. Listen, if you get $12,000 to make a movie, God bless you, that's awesome. I'm not saying I'm not. I don't want to diminish that accomplishment, but it's. Uh, but ultimately, we don't want to have to be baristas as we, as we uh, make movies. We don't want to have to have our day job and shoot on the weekends. As you do the grind, that's awesome. That's what you should do. But we need now a bigger vision and a better business model to be able to have a new way forward. You know, I, I like to say at some point. At some point. The light bulb wasn't invented by the continuous improvement of the candle. At some point, somebody had to say, okay, the candle's great. God bless the candle. Candle's awesome. But we now need to kind of build a different model to be able to get a bigger result. And so now we've seen independent films being diminished in the marketplace. And, and the answer to that isn't just writing it better or shooting it better. Of course, you need to write it well and shoot it well, but we also need to build a different architecture around it so it can be sustainable and, and have an advantage in the marketplace, especially how we, how we communicate it to, it, to a, uh, 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 an investor. I just had a filmmaker go to me for a, he, he, had, he wanted to raise $10,000 for a short film. That's all he wanted to do. He said, do you think there's any transmedia potential here? I looked at it and we, we kind of worked together for about a day and uh, I kind of added a few tricks to it and, and kind of built out the IP. And he went, talked to this investor who he was going for a $10,000 investment. He walked away with a $230,000 investment uh, because all of a sudden, it, the whole thing made more sense. Wow. Business sense. To it, right, and so uh, and so that now he was so happy as an independent filmmaker, uh, saying now I can actually shoot my short, shoot these other things. I actually can go into pre-production on my feature. My investor can be ba being paid back based on these other two things, and now has an equity stake in the feature film as we move forward, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he was super excited. And all he's all we did is he's using the principles of Star Wars the principles of Harry Potter, the principles of, the, of Marvel, and building that into his independent film business plan that separates him in the marketplace.